Hello everyone and welcome to another fun tutorial. Today's video focuses on the Halloween cards using the Better Press letterpress. It's not going to be just any ordinary card we create today. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make spooktacular ombre cards, so stick around. You don't want to miss out on this. Plus, I have a simple tip for stamping randomly with your Better Press. Hi and welcome to Confetti and Cards with Lisa Mensing. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on new content posted to my channel. So the first thing I wanna do is have a look at these amazing Better Press letterpress plates from Spellbinders. Spellbinders was so generous to send these to me and in return, I promised to make some samples. I hope I did them justice, but I had such a great time using these and I can't wait to share all the samples that I created for you. So you're gonna to wanna to stick around to the end of the video to check out all these samples that I made. So the first thing I'm sharing is the Halloween icons set. And this set comes with 10 icons eight sentiments and one die to cut those uh, sentiments out. So this is a great set to have if you're looking just to pick up one to try it out. I recommend this one because once I show you how easy it is to use these to do this random ombre uh, stamping with these, you're going to be like, oh, that's so cool. Let's try it out. So also here we have another one that I love. This one is called Pumpkins and Ghosts, and it's large enough to cover an A2 uh, card front. And I do have samples with this as well. I have samples for everything that I'm sharing with you right now. So next up we have Open If You Dare. Now I don't want you to shy away from this guy. He is super cool. I can't wait to share with you the samples I have for him. I wasn't too sure, but I was like, let's do it. And I'm so glad that I did. And then last we have the uh, spider webs. This is a large cover plate. It covers an A2 completely. So I really do like that. It's that large size and you can use it for something other than just an A2. So the inks I'm going to be using are going to be Wild Berry, Black, and Saffron. These are Better Press Letterpress inks that I have. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and jump into this now. So we're going to get started with these two adorable ghosts. And I want to do a pattern with them on my A2 card base. The problem that I found that I was having when I was trying to do either patterns, of repeat stamping with this, or even random stamping, is trying to position the plates so there's enough space in between where I'm positioning it and what I've already stamped. Also, getting it positioned just right so that I'm not stamping over what I just stamped. So I played around with a few ideas and I came up with this very simple technique. Now, I realize that for some people looking at something in an opposite way and positioning things is probably fairly easy for them. But for some of us, not it, it's not that easy. And I'm, I'm one of those people. It was not that easy for me to look at this, position it in an opposite direction, and then flip the plate upside down, run it through, and then it would be stamped over what I'd already done. And it was very aggravating. Um, so I was like, how can I avoid this? Super simple solution. You want to use masking paper and create a four and a quarter by five and a half inch uh, piece of masking. And we're going to just lay it down on our grid on our chase. And then we're going to mark everywhere we position our plate. That way there's no guesswork. It takes all of the guesswork out of it for you. So I'm actually going to move the ghost to the center of the chase. And I'm going to bring in a black fine tip pen and I'm going to trace around those ghosts. And yes, it's an extra step, but it only takes a few seconds and the end result is so worth it. I promise. Okay, so we're just adding some ink to these. I'm using my little Better Press black ink pad and it's just a dab and twist, dab and twist. That's pretty much all it is. And you don't want to press hard on this 
because you don't want to end up getting ink down into that plate because it will transfer to your paper. So you want to be light handed with this. Now, if you look closely, you can see there's a piece of tape through the platen there. You can see that tape and that's holding my cardstock to my platen. Now, if you are not doing a full stamping of an A2 card like I am, then you could just tape around the edges and go ahead and stamp your image that way. But because I want to completely fill this piece of paper, I'm just sticking that tape to the back of my paper and then centering it up on the platen. Now, when I run this through my machine, I ran it through once and then I cranked it back through. And when I did the unboxing video for my machine, I had some people who were really nice and asked questions about that. But I also had someone who was very rude about that. And common sense tells me that if I have a machine or a tool like this with plates and I'm going to run this through, I'm going to use that plate over and over and over and over. Common sense tells me that running that plate through forward and then back out is not going to hurt it. If it was, we wouldn't have this machine because you wouldn't be able to use that plate over and over and over again, right? So for the, um, the reason that Spellbinders says not to run it through more than once is just so that you don't transfer ink somewhere you don't want it. I have a habit of holding my plates down no matter what I'm doing, if I'm die cutting, if I'm hot foiling, if I'm using the better press, I hold my plates down as I'm cranking them through the machine so I don't have to worry about shifting because I learned early on that if you don't hold the plates down, you'll see me hold them right here, you will end up getting some shifting. So to avoid that, I just started making a habit out of holding my plates in place as I crank them through. So now I'm going to go ahead, remove the platen, and you can see where we're starting to create our pattern across our paper. Now, the tweezers that I'm using are from the very first glimmer machine I ever had. This is the, uh, what you used to get was a set of tweezers with a magnet on it. And I am so glad I held onto those tweezers because they work perfect for picking these little plates up off of this magnetic chase and moving them around easily. I don't have to get my fingers quite so inky. Um, I'm not fighting trying to get that off of that magnet. I just use that tweezer, pick it up, and then reposition it. So let's go ahead and run this through again, and then we're gonna finish it off. I'm gonna fast forward because I think you get the idea of what we're doing here. So in, the next background that we're going to do using the pumpkins, you're really going to see how tracing those pumpkins makes it really quick and really simple to do a random stamped background. So here's a quick look at that background finished up. And I went ahead and did some sentiments the day before and I die cut those out. So I have some extra ones here and I'm just going to show you, I'm going to pull one out and show you what it's going to look like. I'm actually going to put this at the top in the center and I just, I love these, these little ghosts. I just think they're so cute and I personally love simple black and white cards. I think they're so pretty. So we're going to go ahead now and jump into this pink and orange ombre pumpkin random stamping background. I can't wait to share it with you. I think you're really going to like it. So let's get started. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to go ahead and get my cardstock prepped on my platen. You saw I had that tape doubled over on itself. If you want to know what kind of tape this is, this is scotch removable um, tape. It works like a charm. I absolutely love it. And it's not that expensive. It's what I use all the time. So I'm going to bring in the pumpkin from the Halloween Icons Better Press Plates uh, set. And you can see I've been using it. It's inked up. I'm going to lay it in the center of my chase and I'm tracing around it with that black fine tip pen. So once I trace over it, I'm going to grab my saffron ink and wild berry ink. Now I know you're probably thinking saffron, but I promise you these two colors go together so beautifully. I'm going to ink up the bottom with the wild berry. 
and then I'm going to come in and ink up on the top. And I let the two colors marry together because they make a beautiful orange color. So we're going from pink orange up into yellow. We're going to go ahead and run this through the machine real quick. I'm probably going to run it off screen and then we'll go ahead, show you what we've done. And then we're going to reposition that pumpkin. I'm going to show you how easy it is to move right along through this. And there's our pink, orange, yellow ombre. So I missed a little bit of the stem at the top, but you know what? I did not let that bother me one bit. So we know where our pumpkin was traced. So you see how easy it is for me to pick the pumpkin back up now, lay it down, trace around it. You're going to need to trace around every time, but it only takes just a few seconds. And I promise you the headache that it saves you, it is so worth it. Um, so we're again coming in on the pink on the bottom of the pumpkin and then that saffron letting those two colors blend together and I it didn't mess up my ink pads. It might pick up a little bit of the color, but you can just wipe it off. And now if it's something you don't want to do, just use one color. But for me, I want to be as creative as I possibly can with my products. And I'm okay with letting the two colors touch each other on the ink pad. That doesn't bother me. If that's something that you don't want to do with your ink pads, like I said, then maybe just choose to do different color pumpkins. Maybe do a pink pumpkin and then a solid uh, saffron, or maybe use some different color inks or different type of inks to do a Halloween type uh, background. So I did that with the witches hats from this set. I used my VersaFine Claire inks with this and they work beautifully. And I did a uh, purple green and orange and black hats on uh you'll see that sample at the end of the video but for me doing this ombre with these inks it just it made my heart happy so I went with it and you know what if I have to I'll label these blending inks and I'll order me a couple of more ink pads uh, down the road and use those as just clean ink pads right okay so you notice every time I'm moving it, I'm going ahead and I'm tracing around that pumpkin again. And because it just makes it so easy. And I mean, when I told you earlier, it takes the guesswork out of it. I meant seriously, I was not stressing about, is this in the right place? Am I going to end up going over what I've already done? Because I had, I had fought with this for a little bit before I came to the conclusion that I needed to come up with some type of um, trick to eliminate all the hassle I was going through trying to get this to work because I wanted it to work so badly. And as you can see, it works like a charm. So I'm going to go ahead now that you see you're moving that pumpkin, you're rearranging the position, you're going to trace around it and then ink it up and then stamp, run it through the machine to stamp it. That's the process that I did the whole time, but it doesn't take very long to do it. I think maybe it might have taken me 10 minutes total to do this whole background. So now that I'm done with the ink blending, because this is a Avery removable label paper, I can just peel that right off of the chase, throw it in the trash can, and if I want to do another one, I'll just put a fresh piece down and start over again. Or if you wanted to continue to do your pumpkins, just place them where you have your pumpkins marked. You can use it over and over again to create as many of those backgrounds as you want. Now, let's do have a, a little bit of fun with this pumpkins and ghost uh, plate. I absolutely love this. So we're starting with the Better Press Black Ink. And then I'm going to come in with VersaFine Claire Monarch Ink. Because I only have four of the Better Press inks so far. Well, actually, I think I have five. No, maybe four. Anyways, I have the Wild Berry, the Saffron, the Black, and a Tawny color and a Blue color. So I do have five. But I haven't purchased any of the ones that have recently released, and I need to. But like I mentioned earlier, the VersaFine Claire works great with this. So I came in with that Monarch. I laid it down and let it blend into the black some. Then I'm coming in with my Wild Berry and I'm blending that in with that Monarch ink. Then we're going to finish off the very top of this with our Saffron ink and we're going to 
let that blend into that wild berry color and it creates this beautiful orange color just like it did with the pumpkins. We'll go ahead, cover this with the platen and then run it through the machine and I can't wait for you to see the end result of this. It is so pretty and it's all you need. You can put this on a card. You could even do one of the little icons on the inside of your card and then put a simple message in there and you are set to go. These are so easy to do and you could do multiples of these. And as you remember me telling you, I'm holding that plate in place as I'm cranking it through just so I don't have to worry about it shifting and messing up what I've done. But here's the end result and you can see how pretty that is. Well, I think it's really pretty. I was so excited about this because it's something a little bit different. So um, we're going to go ahead now and I'm going to share all the samples that I created with you because I have a bunch of samples to show you. And I want you to let me know what you think down in the comments below of this technique. If you're going to give it a try, it's so easy. Okay, so we're gonna get started with this first sample, and this is the one that I was just speaking about with the witch's hats from that icon set and how I used Versify and Claire inks to stamp them in different colors. And that was from when I was trying to figure out what would be the best way to go about randomly stamping. And you can see how some of the hats were really close together, but it was okay, I still made use of that. So for this, we have two for one. I did that pumpkin background. And then I cut a frame with it so that I could get two cards out of one, backing the first card with the spider webs, and then adding the frame around my open if you dare. I absolutely love that guy. He is a hoot. Now I have another one I'm getting ready to share that is so much fun with him. Let's have a look at it. So here he is, and I use the spider webs. And I use white pigment ink to stamp the spider webs onto black cardstock. It works like a dream. And then I cut a frame using some Spellbinders dies. I'm going to have all this stuff linked down below for you. And of course, I did that ink blending again with the black ink, the saffron, and then the wild berry ink. And I just love what it did to this guy. Now, this is just a quick and simple way. I mean, these things, they happened really quick. So let's go ahead and have a look at something so sweet. Now, is that not the cutest? So what we did was we used the black uh, piece there out of the frame from the previous card. And I have a black and white background with the spider webs. And then I actually foiled this little uh, guy here from the Halloween icon set. I actually foiled him using my glimmer machine. So you can use these for foiling. And then I just added a simple sentiment to that as well. So you probably recognize these from the beginning of the video. I absolutely love this. You could color them if you wanted to, or you could add splatters, ink blend, but there's something to be said for just a simple black and white card. And I love the sentiment, I would never ghost you. And they're actually holding hands. And I just think, this is like the cutest little card for like your spouse or your significant other. I just think it's so sweet. And here we are with the pumpkins and ghost card that we did at the end of the video. I love this so much. I love that blend of those colors. You could change the colors up if you wanted to do something more traditional with purples and greens and oranges. Um, you could play around with that and figure out a way to make that work for you. But this ink blending on this, I just absolutely love. The saffron ink and the wild berry ink are amazing for ink blending um, on these plates. I just love it. I will be creating more with this. I've had such a great time. Like I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it and bringing it to you. Until next time, please know how much I appreciate you. I do have my affiliate links down below. If you click them and shop through them, I do earn a small commission and it helps to keep me in cardstock and inks and all that fun stuff. I do want to say thank you to Spellbinders for trusting me with these products um, and I appreciate you so very much. Until next time, you all, please take care.